Okay, and uh, on to personal picks. I don't have a bumper for this segment, so it's just, hey, welcome to O'Reilly Radio 129. This is our personal picks, the wrap-up of the show, recorded Friday, October 14th. Uh, uh, sorry, October uh, wait, 20 no, that's, it's first. The, wow, wow. Have I been saying 14th the whole time? Yeah. I have. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, this is going to be awesome. He's going to dub himself in on all these other ones on October 22nd. <laughs> 22nd. Actually, 21st. 21st. <laughs> nice. Oh, With geez. the computerized voice. I should do that. St- Stephen Hawking can read the intro October for me. October yeah. 21st. <laughs> oh, jeez. Actually, let's see. I-, I think I can do something like that here. Let's see here. Uh, Are you yeah. changing your pick out for whatever you're no, about to No, do? no, no. It'll be... Um, uh, Alexa, what's today's date? Today is Saturday, October 22nd. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I can just I, I just pipe her in. If I need to. <laughs> okay. So, special, um, special anyway. Special guest on the Relay Radio, Alexa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, it's still show 129. At least I got that right. But, yes, the date is uh, October 22nd now. Um, so, as far as personal picks, uh, you know, how about some audience feedback? If you have something that you think we ought to review or anything like that, how about you send us an email at a really radio podcast at gmail.com or send us a, a text or those uh, valuable voicemails at 470-222-6759. Um, as far as myself, uh, I'm going to pick cell phone warranties because I broke mine and I didn't have a warranty. <clears throat> and the phone was only seven months old, but... The manufacturer's warranty does not cover broken glass. And companies such as You Break I Fix and, uh, and others like that, they don't always have the parts for your phone. So I couldn't get it fixed there either. So I was forced to buy a new flagship phone, which is painful on the pocketbook. So if you, uh, if you get the insurance for like $5 a month, yeah, it's insurance. It's a ripoff. I know. But if you get that, then should you let your phone fall down and break or accidents happen, maybe your kid grabbed it and then had a tantrum and then threw it at something and then it broke, things of that nature, uh, the insurance for a deductible of $100 instead of buying a new phone at $449 uh, might be a thing to do. So there you go. Reconsider those cell phone warranties, especially if you absolutely have to have that wonderful little supercomputer in your pocket, like I do. So, Stephen. Yes. What's yours? The cutest robot in the world. Oh, what's this? This is something I ran across a while ago, and I've been following a little bit, and if I get the money, my God, I want one of these things. Everybody who's watched, say, movies like, um, oh, bloody hell, I actually just forgot. Um, Nope, I don't know that one. Yes, Wally. Thank you. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, the the voice of Wally, the personality, everything else. Well, somebody kind of captured that in an actual robot that you can buy. It's this little tiny at home cutesy <gasps> thing that actually does have its own almost personality. Will play games with you. Can be trained for other games and what? actually acts and reacts. Oh I my mean, god, it's small. It's so throw small. A video up there, show people. I know. Yeah, it, it's a tiny little thing, but it's so cute. It's so tiny. Oh, oh look at this. <laughs> and it makes happy noises. <gasps> oh. <laughs> no, it's mad. <laughs> Um, okay. But they show so, you one of the newer videos also is it shows it having fun and making all kinds of cute noises as it's, as it's flying around the room. And then it kind of opens its eyes and realizes it's flying around the room and starts freaking out. Is it game time? It's... This next one here? No, it's not game time. Game time's a good one. Okay. Well, right, here's game time. <laughs> Oh, it gloats. Cosmo is sick of your shit. Right, so, so right now, I've seen a robot that gloats and a robot that gets angry. How is this not the beginning of the Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. 
because it's cute. Yeah, since it's cute, we let it get away with things. It's horrifically cute, and the noises it makes are so freaking cute. But it's it's actually rather impressive what it can do, what it does for the size it is, how reactive it is. Oh Um, my gosh, this is awesome. I read a review about it of a guy who actually reviewed one, and his dog was getting jealous of it because of how much time he was spending playing with Cosmo. (laughs) (laughs) His dog would come over and whine and wag its tail every time Cosmo was on the floor. Huh. I, uh, I, I, I kind of want it. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. You got a Cosmo videos. Flip. Let's see. Best friend is a cute one. Also, Cosmo lives on the edge is cute. Uh, I don't see the flying one, but, uh, Cosmo lives on the edge. Okay. Sorry if we're doing the little window, but hey, it works out better that way. Some robots know their limits. <laughs> Boy, they got they got the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the one that was just like, I do what I want. And... <laughs> the launch off. Wee. Yeah. Like, that's my uh, robot. This is... This is compelling, and it's a uh, hundred and seventy nine dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not bad considering. No, not con- considering all that. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, yeah, like it's yeah, expensive, yeah. but yeah, it's not. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Cheaper than a brand yeah. new phone. Shut yeah. Up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Without Shut insurance. up, you. Shut up, you. Let's see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, I I, re- I found this I think a couple months ago, and I was like, no, I I. I love Wally. I'm like, oh God, it it's it's our current version of what we can pull off with Wally. Yeah. I need one of these in my life somehow. It really is. Oh, I just wanted to uh, point out that uh, Mama Van in the chat room she uh, she had to had to take off a little bit early, but uh, she likes you, Amber. I saw that and I wanted to say something, but I was gonna I was gonna wait till the end because everybody else had stuff that they wanted to say. But that that means a lot to me. Thank you, Mama Splendid. Van. Splendid, and um, so of so course, far we got the, the the video fit yeah. where he gets where Cosmo gets swole. <laughs> really, really. There's, yeah, he's he's simple, but he's also cool. Decidedly durable. Drop test uh, three hundred three hundred plus parts, meticulously engineered. Of course, meticulously engineered. Fit. Okay, this is the last one. Then we'll move on. Because it's really cute. He, he does not skip an arm day. <clears throat> he does not skip arm day. They remind me of the companion to the portal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he gloats. He gets angry and he gets depressed. I, I, th- I think that was he like tired himself out and he like fell asleep. I think. Again, you guys are looking at this entirely different than I am. <laughs> oh come on! I, he you, gloats. He you reacted ang- poorly to Alexa too. He, he gloats. He gets angry. <laughs> the third video said smart, maybe too smart. And then on this one, he was working out to get stronger. This is the goddamn Terminator. <laughs> And yes, oh. I did react poorly to Alexa, and she heard me and talked shit from across the room. She did. Yes. <laughs> but you know what's ingenious about this is that they made it cute so that we'll, we'll never suspect until it's too late. I've already suspected. Yeah, but you have no feelings, so that's why <laughs> you picked up on it. Yeah, one robot to another. <laughs> I'm on to your ass, Cosmo. <laughs> while, while the rest of us are just going, oh, look, it gets sad. Alexa? Self-destruct. I'll start the self-destruct sequence, but only on the understanding that you dramatically cancel it at the last second. <laughs> There's a lot. I've got way too much electronics right here. Um, <laughs> come on. It's it's fun technology. Artificial intelligence, right? If done correctly. You know, little robots that'll, uh, you know, take over the world slowly and, and take our jobs. Yep. They these are the things. That, these are the immigrants that are taking your gerbs. They're all named Cosmo. <laughs> I, 
I don't know what this it it it's so small it doesn't really have a job. Maybe it could get you a, get you a beer. You get Not enough of them together, that. they can take down Rubio Butt. <laughs> I wonder if they could. I wonder if we could do battle bots with Cosmos. I don't want to do that. That hurt them. Oh, I know. I want them to joust. <laughs> I want Cosmo jousting. Okay, jousting might be okay. <laughs> on battle bots. No. Yes. That would be playing way too much into Fred's paranoia when he, Cosmo comes at him with a buzzsaw. Come he on. looks like he might well, you're be on like to e- efficient at catapulting in some capacity. Maybe. The way his little. Bracket arms. It's cool. I, I kind of want one. Thank yeah. you. That's You're uh, welcome. That, that's a fun one. That's definitely a fun one. Okay, Fred, on to you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, throw, so, I'm so thrown off my game with that damn Cosmo. Now all I have right. another thing to not trust inherently. <laughs> uh, that all your friends will no, have. Because you guys don't understand. I'm going to come over here <laughs> for a Friday, and I'm just going to walk in, and there's going to be this damn robot that rolls up on me, <laughs> and then he's going to have already AI'd himself into realizing this is the guy that doesn't like me. We're going to have beef from the beginning. It doesn't. It j- it's all downhill from here for me. It has the fear sensors built in. It already knows fear. No, no, it under- no. It understands it'll be trying things. to express its dominance. It'll, it'll roll on the desk. Fred will re- reach over there. It'll, it'll just be like a cat. Knock his headphones off. Look at him like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Honestly, oh, I God, would, don't put, a, don't I put would, a cat intelligence in there. Don't, I would don't film a series of videos just like that one. You know how like he goes to the edge and then that other robot like completely runs <clears throat> off the edge? Yeah. But you film a table where Cosmo goes to the edge, and then instead of another robot, I just haul ass off the edge of the table. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cosmo's like, what? Uh, I'm AI? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'd be, right. that 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 um, would be something. That'd be something. Maybe maybe for this. But my my pick is actually something that's coming in, in the future. I would like to say the near future. Um, and and basically, um, I'll give a little bit of backstory. But not too long ago, I started listening to a um, podcast that I um, reviewed at one point called A Slice of Fried Gold. It's a movie review podcast off a couple of guys that I was introduced to through um, Todd, who we had in studio mm-hmm. with his comic book. Todd Davis, yep. And um, that got me thinking that, you know, I enjoy movies so much that I kind of started thinking I wanted to do a show. And Andy and I had kind of discussed um, starting a show, doing something, and him basically adopting it under the umbrella of Cowan Services. And sure. it was something to where, like, if you provided the content and did the things, he would help with editing, host it, you know, basically – We kind of have like that built in cross promotion, something to build what Cowan Services is. And so I started thinking about doing a movie review podcast, but doing it in a unique twist where I would rebut reviews of other movies because generally speaking, when I hear somebody talk, I find something that I disagree with and I want to correct it. Um, This was about two months ago. And then I realized that there's so much movie review stuff out there that everything's kind of been reviewed. There are a lot of takes on everything. What would more fit my style is exactly what I'm going to work on. And it's going to be called I'm Not Wrong, the podcast. <laughs> and, Which was going to be a shirt that we were going to not give you. Right. That, it, and that's, that's <laughs> basically where the idea came from is that we did discuss it on a previous show. So please go back through the back catalog and find that show mm-hmm. in which we all discussed how terrible it would be to give me a shirt that said I'm not wrong and let me wear it out in public. <laughs> because, again, I'll call back to the beginning of this show, snarky, uppity prick. Um, th- the premise of the show is basically just going to be I will find the things that I'm already finding via social media, news, whatever it is, and give my take on it because invariably I'm seeing something from somebody somewhere that's misinformation. And I just want to provide that little bit of logic and reason base where I research the topic as much as I can find and provide that kind of rebuttal, counter argument, my take on it. Let people as deep into my head as they may want to go in any situation. And, you know, basically it will be on a variety of topics. It could be on a movie. I could completely disagree with with a review I hear and just take that to task or give my take on it it could be um you know atheist atheistic in nature it could be political it could be about a book anything basically the way i kind of presented it to andy was if i would take to facebook to comment or rant on it then i will present it on this show 
and the goal is to do about a half an hour maybe longer if I find a wealth of information or have a guest or somebody to, to talk about something with me and um, you know realistically tomorrow I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and record the audio for the first show kind of get that out there basically a mission statement and that kind of thing um, and, and plan out where I'm gonna go for the next couple of shows once I have a couple recorded I'll sit down with Andy we'll look it over see where some changes or fixes or you know things I can work on may need to be done and the hope is, is that pretty soon um, I will be able to present people with you know a, another take on my viewpoint on things outside of O'Reilly Radio um, not leaving O'Reilly Radio, just another project to help um, what is essentially Andy's passion and my burgeoning passion. For really the empire. Everybody's passion on the show. <laughs> just kind of growing the brand is what I want to do. And I feel like I have more to say on some of these like odd topics. And if I'm giving it away for free on Facebook, why not make people listen to me as much as I can make somebody listen to me? So it, it, it's something that exactly. I, I'm getting, you know, it, it came along pretty quickly from what I pitched Andy to, you know, I, I've picked music. I, I'm working on show notes. I've got things falling in line pretty quickly. So, you know, my hope is, is that maybe next time I'm on the show, you know, we'll be that much closer and, you know, have a date for release type deal. Happens fast. Happens fast. Once you get going, you just uh, strike while the iron's hot. I'm all in favor of that. Um so yeah, look for that here on uh, on oreillyradio.com. We'll uh, we'll get a page going and uh, and get you all set up. And what I did is uh, in the show notes for those of you listening that do peruse the show notes is I um, included the link to the Twitter that I created for the show. Um, there's not a lot of content there right now, but obviously there, it'll grow as I mm -hmm. add to you know topics and I look for things and, and start promoting um, via that. So you know I'll probably pr be promoting duel for O'Reilly and um, I'm not wrong on that show or I mean on that Twitter but figure get some people there now if they want to start following it just in in preparation um, there's a link so you can find it there bring it on go hit uh, twitter.com slash not wrong podcast all uh, all one word be fantastic all right Amber the new blood <laughs> this so I take it this is this is this, this is your your chance to to just regale us with whatever uh, whatever cool thing you like. Maybe I don't know a particular publisher I hear about. <laughs> you know, may, maybe something like that. Maybe a maybe a particular pen name. Yeah, I, I mean, I I could talk a little bit about Wormwood Publishing. Um, Sa shameless and... self promotion time is now. <laughs> um, and. Uh... Lana Hart, which is actually my pen name, and I write um, paranormal romance and horror. Um, because Wait, I say, think say that again yeah, for the people in the back. Slow. Paranormal romance and horror. Okay, um, there's a genre. All right, <laughs> it is a genre, and it's because I think love is terrifying, and so romance as a genre should be too. Um, You're not wrong. No, not wrong at all. <laughs> But uh, I write I write um, romance in the context of much bigger themes like like I said horror and mystery, uh, urban fantasy. So it's it's kind of like Dresden Files with kissing and sex. Um, mm. So there you go. Um, there's a lot of nods to the uh, Cthulhu mythos. Um, to uh, to like the old school um, gas lamp horror a little bit. Um, so if, if you like things like that, uh, you should definitely check it out. Again, the pen name for that is Lana Hart, H-A-R-T. They're available on Amazon if you've got Kindle Unlimited, which is a really cool program where you pay uh, $9.99 a month to read as many books enrolled in that program as you want. Um, they are free for you if you're enrolled in that program. Um, if you're not enrolled in that program, from October 27th to the 31st, so all the way up through Halloween, all three books in the series will be free, um, regardless of whether or not you are enrolled in that program. Um, How about that? But I did kind of want to talk about this other cool thing that Certainly. I, that I found. Okay. Um, what you got, what you got? There's this game called Sunless Sea, and it's by Fail Better Games. They're the same people who made Fall in London. Uh, Fall in London is a browser-based game that 
is also in that same vein of like the gas lamp horror and there's like a there's kind of like an, an a steampunk undercurrent going on there um but they've made a game called sunless sea it's available on steam um as well as i think good old games uh gog.com yeah um Recently, they came out with an expansion for that game called Zubmariner. And huh. um, okay. the idea of this game and its new expansion is that you are in this underground um, uh, horror version of, of London. And you've got this huge underwater lake called the Z, um, which is filled with all kinds of monsters, um, different places for you to discover um, these islands that are filled with absolute horrors, um, a lot of cryptic history to kind of find out why did London fall? Um, why is hell only a river away? Um, and Zubmariner not only allows you to continue doing all those things, but it allows you to turn your ship into a submarine and go below the the Z and discover what's down there, like the colonies of Drownies, which are um people who have drowned but death isn't really so permanent down here um so they've created a civilization under the water drownies drownies um and it's an absolutely wow. fantastic expansion i have been having a hell of a lot of fun with it lots of new lore um if you're if you're into story based games um Fail Better as a Company is for you and so is Sunless Sea and uh the newest expansion for it, which is also available on Steam. And I have added a link to the Fail Better games. That's fail, not feel. Mm -hmm. Fail better fail games better. Mm -hmm. dot com slash sunless. That is in the show notes uh, under the Zub Mariner expansion. Expansion. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> expansion. Expansion. That looks that looks cool. Yeah. I um I looked at that a while ago. I think uh, Mike had that as a as a pick once upon a time. Another guy that was on the show, uh, and he had uh, he always loved the uh, the Cthulhu mythos as well. So so having an expansion, it's like woohoo! That's that's great for those of you that like the uh, tentacly horror, <laughs> great old ones and all that. Nice. So yeah, you, sh you guys should definitely take a look at it. Uh, but uh, and and you should totally turn all the lights off. When you play, and uh, make sure all the doors are uh, are locked. Cthulhu Dagon twenty sixteen, make Riley great again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Sticks out for Cthulhu. <clears throat> nice, nice. Okay, so I think that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, lady and gentlemen, we actually finally I can actually say that. Um, I, this brings us to a close. So, let's see, where's that wrap-up music? No, 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 not that, not that. There it is. Oh, golly gosh. <laughs> uh, by the way, that was one of my show notes last week was, that was really loud. <laughs> and I couldn't hear anything that I said. And that was annoying. Okay, so I think that's a about right just somewhere way underneath my voice so that is it for tonight we'll be back live ish about next friday about 9 30 ish uh, in the eastern time zone in the meantime the conversation should continue on the web head over to oreallyradio.com that's o-r-l-y R-A-D-I-O dot com for all the links right at the top of the page so you can uh, like us on the Facebook, follow us on the Twitters, the Tumblers, maybe even the Google Plus if that's still around, and subscribe to the YouTube and the Twitch channels. You can also watch us live, uh, and I certainly encourage you to do so uh, directly from the webpage. We have the, uh, the live uh, box and chat for the Twitch channel right there. So you can do everything and uh, you can communicate with us like Mama Van, our super fan, has always been doing. So thank you very much, Mama Van, for being part of the show and everybody that participates. We love you, we love you, we love you. But you know, hey, if you've managed to stay all the way through all these shows and all these credits, how about you give us a hand? If you have a few dollars to spare, you can contribute to the Patreon and get early access to show releases and maybe some special perks here and there if I can figure out what the heck I want to do with that. Just follow the Patreon link on the webpage and that'll take you over to P A T R E O N dot com slash O'Reilly Radio. You can also make a one time donation via the uh, webpage via the cleverly named donate button. And if you can't fit us into your rainy day funds, uh, how about you do us a solid and share the show with a friend? Leave us a review uh, on wherever you found us, particularly on iTunes. That gets us in front of a lot more eyeballs and, uh, and into ear canals and all that. And, uh, you know, we're always looking for new ideas for the show. 
<clears throat> so if you can't, if you somehow can't leave us a great review or you can't contribute to the show in financial means, get well, get ideas off your head. You know, go ahead and email them into us. Oh, really? Radio podcast at gmail.com. If you're the more talkative sort, we've got that phone number 470-222-6759. That's always ready to take your call or your text. Can't thank you enough for spending some time with us. Until next time, this has been Oh, Really? Radio, part of the Cowan Services Network. Music for the show is agreed by Kevin McLeod of Acomptech.com and yours truly. All right. See you next week, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>